watches all the time, gazing from the shadows behind cement and lime. They see you at your heart. They see you in your bed. Is this supposed to frighten me? Beware. You think you're the first ones to drug me? Invade my mind? I'll find my way through this, Beware and I'll bring this whole time. damn court crashing Watch down around your time. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into it. This one is long overdue. I want to talk about Scott Snyder's City of Owls. So this was the first two-art story for Batman all the way back in 2010, part of the New 52 reboot of DC's continuity. So I'm going way back with this one, a little over two years. My copies are trade paperback books, I don't like hardcovers at all. And in book one, volume one, there are seven issues, 176 pages overall, and at the end we get some fantastic uh, concept art for the book, sketches and things like that. In book two, there are five issues with the same thing, 176 pages and beautiful concept art at the end. The Court of Owls has always been an interesting concept to me. My favorite Batman adversary because this isn't like any of his other rogues gallery. The court isn't even equivalent to like if all his rogues teamed up together. No, this is something way more serious, darker, with a different tone, different motives, and just a secret, sinister way of doing things. The books came out in 2010. However, my first introduction to all this actually came from 2014's Batman vs. Robin. That movie featured the Court of Owls, and at the time, I loved it. I thought this movie, the animation, the voice acting, the backstory, and Bruce Wayne's connection to all this, it's one of the best DC animated movies in my opinion. What they did for me, I want to do for you. You've done quite enough. How did you... Not too hard to track, considering the bloody trail you two have left. Top of the line. At least that's what I thought. But after reading the book, I was like, oh yeah, the book... Ten times A hundred times better. A hundred times better. The difference between the movie and the book is that the movie is a story about Batman's relationship with Damien that happens to feature the Court of Owls. But the book is a story about the Court of Owls and Gotham's history. This is a secret society of some of the most wealthiest and influential people in the city. And they've been around since the 1800s. And the tone of this book is much darker, it's grittier. This is a, literally a bloody conspiracy story. And for the most part, those kinds of stories are always good. Just, just look at the art for a second. Let's just look at it. It's really grounding and it's dirty. I'll be honest, I wasn't a fan of Greg Capullo's artwork at first with Batman. I just didn't really like it. I was used to a different style in comics. But with this story, it fits perfectly well. Probably one of my favorite moments is when Batman finds out that the court is actually real. Owls are one of the few birds who don't build their own nests. What they do is they find abandoned nests or nests in use by other birds and they take them over. Essentially, they're invaders. And Bruce, in the story, realizes that's exactly what they've been doing in Gotham. Hidden rooms inside of buildings all over the city. Bruce's great-great-grandfather, Alan Wayne, was the city's benefactor back in the 1800s. And people thought he went crazy when he started talking about the court and how they're living in his home. I like the part in the present day when Batman realizes that his great-great-grandfather was right. They're in our homes. They build their nests behind the walls. And one thing that I really like the most is that with the whole legend and mythology of the Court of Owls, we also get to learn more about Gotham City's history. The, the whole city itself is a character in this book. Even from the very beginning, we get a deconstruction of what Gotham City is and what it means to different people. But the really interesting thing is how Bruce Wayne's 
vision or version of Gotham City is very different from the actual Gotham City. The whole nature of the Court of Owls existing in Gotham, the Gotham that Batman watches over, is something that doesn't even make sense to him, and it plays with his sanity and his confidence. Like, he wasn't even willing to accept it at first. He was in denial that they were even real for a while. But I mean, it is pretty, it's pretty tight because it's like this whole time, this is, this isn't early in his career, this is very, he, he's established, so it's like he's been doing this for a long time, and it's like the whole time, while he has secret bases around the city, they have secret bases around the city. He knows every rooftop, back alleyway, and gutter all around the city, and so do they. They've been watching him as he's been watching over others. And all the time he's been doing his thing, they've been growing and moving in silence. He has a base of operations and they have theirs. And it's pretty sick. Y'all, if this, th this is like a construction of mazes and marble floors, owl statues. There's literally a room with thousands and thousands of pictures on the wall of the victims the court has killed over the centuries. It's pretty grisly. And I really like the whole concept of constantly feeling watched in this story. Even in this panel right here, we see Bruce and Alfred talking, but we see it from the viewpoint of Batman's mask through the eye slits, like someone is watching them through the eyes of the mask. That's tight! I'm, I'm extremely disappointed with, with DC and Warner Brothers because they haven't used these stories. These are very, very, very good stories right here, and DC has not taken the opportunity to use them in their live action movies. If anything, they really sort of remind me of Captain America the Winter Soldier, how that movie had a secret organization within the government. You're not sure who you can trust, they got an assassin that's been hunting and, and scratching people off a list for decades. Yeah, that's basically the Court of Owls. But see, the Court of Owls did it better. The Batman movies we get with DC, they're just okay when it compares to the comics. I want to see Batman stories like this on screen. Something closer to like R-rated. Just a gritty, scary detective story. And honestly, I'd like to see that with Robert Pattinson's Batman. It would fit so perfectly in that universe. Look at the style of that movie. How Gotham is built, the tone of everything. There were scenes in that film that were very dark and eerie. That's what I loved about it most. You get the Court of Owls in there, in that universe, and you got a perfect film. There's so much humanity in this story, so much grief with the history of the Waynes and this giant conspiracy. At the end of the day, The Court of Owls and City of Owls is a phenomenal story arc that every Batman fan should own. I hate that it took me so long to read it. All this time, all these years, I was just, when it comes to The Court of Owls, my knowledge, I was just going off the movie. And of course, you know, they're in the Gotham Knights game. But the movie barely even scratches the surface when it comes to the court. It's pretty disappointing when you read the book and then you watch the movie. There are a lot of elements there in terms of fight scenes, locations, and characters, but it's lacking a ton. It's still pretty it's still pretty good for kids, especially watching on-screen adaptations of the new 52, but they just the book is way better. Way more story, way more everything. But now I see that I actually want to get more books from New 52. Because I've seen all the movies in this animated universe. And all of them are pretty good. They're all good in their own way. But most of them aren't even two hours long. So I know there's a lot more story that I'm missing out on. This is one of my favorite Batman stories of all time, guys. I'd highly recommend it. Once you start it, it's damn near impossible to put it down. Next up, I want to do Flashpoint. One of my favorite DC stories of all time. Certainly my favorite Flash story of all time. It's the story that birthed the entire New 52 universe. I want to talk about that one next, but... Guys, this is my review over Batman Court of Owls and City of Owls. If you're not reading it, you like, because this, this, this is old, but it's really good. And I would highly recommend it for anybody that calls himself a DC fan. That's all for today, super friends. Stay reading and stay safe.